tell us about Ryan, uh, what kind of a person he was, and how did the situation get to the point it did in October? Well, I'll start by saying that um, he was a happy, He was a very happy little boy, and um, even when he was really little, I mean really little, he was so giving, and he always would pick dandelions and bring them to us, and um, he was smart, he was so smart. That was a problem with him a lot of times, um, but he also had ADHD which caused him a lot of struggles in his life because he was very, very smart, but he couldn't concentrate and he couldn't focus. So um, when he was in first grade at Woodward Township, they, they tested him for the gifted program. And then in second grade, they turned around and put him in a learning support class because, I mean, he was smart, but he, he would like to... Uh, always be making people laugh and you know he, he didn't want to concentrate on his work and the teacher said if somebody would just drop a pencil that'd be it he'd totally lose his concentration so um, we were convinced by some doctor somewhere along the line to put him on medication which we did so he was on medication since second grade off and on um, you know and it takes a while to see if it's gonna work it's a very frustrating trying thing to try to keep a child on medication he didn't like it. He said it made him feel funny. He didn't like to be the one going to the principal's office to take a pill twice a day. Um, and so we struggled to try to keep him on his medication. And um, he, I think in eighth grade was the one year he was on um, Ridlin. Ridlin. And he actually made the honor roll. I mean, he worked hard and he tried really hard. And I knew he was smart. He could just focus. Um, when he got into his teen years, he started getting into some trouble. And um, he was very rebellious. He didn't want to take his medications and things like that. But he ended up um, in and out of jail a couple of times, you know, just because he made wrong choices. You know, and he'll, he, he'd tell you that today. He just, I know I was dumb, you know, I did stupid things. But um, he actually moved out when he was 17, got his own apartment. And he, he worked different jobs and different things. He did go back and get his GED, I think when he was 19, and then he got in trouble again. Um, he actually got some certificates for um, business, and he got his barber license. So, and he was a good barber. Anybody will tell you that he it was, was good. When he had that head in front of him, that was his focus. And he just, I mean, he just loved to do that, and he was so good at it, so... He opened a barber shop. Yeah, but remember we when he him. took the exam, he actually, they revamped the, the exam for the state of Pennsylvania. He was the first one in the state of Pennsylvania to have a perfect score. Yeah, he got 100. He, got, he was the first yeah. one to get 100 on that test. But he was a good barber. And um, like I said, he was in and out of jail. But he, um, he was a, a really good person with a good heart. He would do anything for anybody. If he had five bucks in his pocket and somebody needed it, he'd give it to him. Um, he got his barber shop open and um, he always struggled with that medication thing. I mean, if he, if he wasn't taking medication, he was using street drugs. It was one or the other. You know, it was a constant battle for him back and forth to try to stay focused on, on what he wanted to do. He used to make himself a list and go out and he'd come home and nothing on the list would be done. And I'd say, what did you do? Well, first I was heading down to this office and then I saw such and such had a flat tire and then we got that taken care of and then we did this and then we did and then he would come home and nothing on his list would be done. But it, he has the barber shop. It was this nice barber shop. And um, like I said, he, he really, really was a good person. He just made some bad choices and he tried to help other people as much as he could. He had a nice girlfriend. They had been Beyonce. together off and on. Yeah, Beyonce. Off and on for eight years they were together, and they had two beautiful baby girls together. And he he was very good with those girls. He loved those girls, all three of them. And, um, but he, he continued to struggle, and he kept telling me that 
Mom, I have a wonderful family, beautiful kids, a business. He said, because I just still am not happy inside because I don't know why. But the medications that he was taking um, were basically, as far as I'm concerned, he was still in a trial period with, with Celexa. And he ended up going to um, White Deer, and they doubled his dose while he was there. White and Deer Treatment Center. White Deer Treatment Center, the one down in the Lancaster area. Um, so and, and why did he go into he went He went to rehab because he started using coke. And, he's, and he knew that this was going to be a bad thing for him and his family. So and he went for help. He went. He went down there. The first two days he was there during the detox, he was given what they called a lethal dose of three kinds of medications. It sent him to the emergency room, Lancaster Regional, and um, because they said he almost died. You know, I'm, I'm thinking he's down there in rehab getting better, and he almost died. Well, before he left, they doubled his dose of Celexa from 20 to 40 milligrams. And from the time he came home, the end of July, um, he was not the same, was he? Yeah. I mean, he... Was he on that increased dose the whole time, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, he was. And he was taking a mood enhancer and some other... I have a list of the things that he was taking. And um, I just... I just, he just acted different from the time he came home and with all the things going on, um, you know, supposed pending jail time, um, you know, uh, depression and just all the different things that he was going through, he just felt that there was no escape for him. You think he felt cornered? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. There's and no you know, doubt in my mind. To this day, we still never knew what it was that he supposedly could have done that was so serious for, for the, for the Under investigation. police or agents yeah. to have him have you asked thoroughly him? convinced. You know, I have it, you know, because, you know, maybe there was something. I don't know. I don't know what he was doing. Okay. I mean, we pretty much could account for most of his time. I really don't know. So after he made. came back from White, did, did he stay the full length for treatment? Yeah, I think it was 28 days, 27 or 28 days. And, and after he came back they, from that? they don't let him go home unless they feel that they are going to be okay. But um, when he came home from there, his mood was different. He was, uh, we went to, when we went to the beach, you weren't there, but, I mean, he was, like, yelling at people on the beach. Was his personality different? Oh, absolutely. It? But then later that night, he'd be all happy. Come on, let's go. We're going crabbing. And he'd get all the kids, and they all went crabbing. And it was like, uh, it was like bipolar, yeah. but within a day. Extreme mood swings. Was he Extreme. seeing? Was he getting medical and, and psychological help from anyone up? He was here? going to Diacon for counseling. I don't know if he ever went back to his doctor. I made an appointment for his psychiatrist, and he wouldn't go there because he thought they were going to commit him again, so he wouldn't go to the appointment. Whose care was he under for the prescription? Um, that. Well, was doubled. his original doctor was Dr. Schrack, and he prescribed this Alexa for him. But I believe that White Deer actually prescribed the double dose of Alexa, the mood enhancer, and the other things he was taking. But when he got home, there was no follow-up. There was nothing. They just, here, pack your bags, take your pills, and go home. Do you feel that this tragedy could have been prevented? Absolutely. I, mean, I think they looking somebody back, home. Looking back, it's always... A lot well, yeah, different than when you're living sight. through it. There's a couple of different things. I think that there was so much going on for him and he couldn't handle it. And the one thing was the um, the medications. Somebody who's having a lot of issues and, and is frail and having problems and to be sent home with no follow-up of any kind, that, that there is a problem. And I wouldn't even know where to begin to figure out what could or should have been done. But that's not my job. You know, I just, I know that he went there and I was relieved thinking, oh good, he's going to get some help. Um, not only did he almost die, then he came home and he was acting totally strange and there was no follow-up anywhere. You two have been through a really unique, sad, tragic walk. If there are other parents who happen to see this, do you have any advice for them that are, that are going through traumatic times? Uh, well, with my their advice kids? would be that um, keep them close and 
You know, one thing about people like Ryan is they are good at manipulating people. They're good at um, letting you hear what you want to hear so you'll leave them alone. And, and that's what they do. So you have to watch for signs and, you know, support, support them as much as you can. A lot of people feel that, you know, I, I understand the tough love thing. You just let them go. Let them figure it out on their own. Let them fall. And, you know, they'll get back up. It doesn't always happen. And with somebody like Ryan, who we know has had problems since he was in second grade, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we've done everything we could to stay right on him and try to help him. But when they get to be 28, 29 years old, sometimes it's really hard because they just look at you like, oh, this is my life. I can, I can do this. As far as um, family support, I would say do everything you can because someday they're going to be gone. And then, then there's nothing you can do except say, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that. But... And even when you do, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference.